Welcome to Families for Life with Brian and Brian, a podcast of Oak Hill Baptist Church. On today's episode, we're going to recap our Settle for Nothing Less series with a special guest. Hey, Brian, how are you doing, man? Brian, I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. Awesome. I am really glad that you are doing well right we're, now. We're finishing up our <laughs> last episode for yes. our Settle for Nothing Less. It's pretty exciting. Hey, what is coming next? Let's tell all of our listeners yeah, what yeah, we got yeah. in the can. So we are going to keep doing this because we enjoy it, and we hope that you guys are enjoying listening to this. We're going to be talking about uh, kind of technology and how it is intrinsically a part of our lives. We're going to be using a resource called the digital invasion. And we're going to be just walking through that and talking about practical ways that technology is a part of our lives and how we can interact with that for the glory of God as parents and with students. Yeah, I think that's really important. There's a, you know, in today's culture, in today's world, it's in everything. It's in our school system. It's at home. And we really, as parents, need to think about how it affects our kids and what what we need to do uh, in light of Scripture and and all of these things. So I'm excited about that. Absolutely. Me too. So I, I hope it'll be a helpful thing for us, but especially for our listeners as well. Right. So. Well, as we recap Settle for Nothing Less and we get... We, we kind of finalize and put a bow on all that. We got a special guest with us today. Yep. Yep. Our very special guest, very important guest, Pastor, pastor Alan, Alan Scott, Scott, the lead pastor at Oak Hill Baptist Church. Here with yeah. us. Yeah. Hey, guys, thanks for having me. I was wondering when I was going to get a shot at this podcast thing. So uh, <laughs> I appreciate you including me, and uh, I'm excited for today. So let's see what happens. Well, we just wanted to get things rolling, and then we wanted you to come in and correct everything that we've said already. <laughs> so give yeah. us your wisdom, okay? Well, you probably should have another special guest for that. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to uh, join in with you guys and to put my two cents worth in anyway. Awesome. So just to kind of recap where we've been, we've been using this resource, Settle for Nothing Less, and it's based in research. Lifeway uh, took an opportunity to talk to a lot of parents and survey them and look at what were the main influencers that helped their children or hurt their children in clinging to their faith. And so what they found was uh, 10 things. We have Bible reading as number one. We have prayer as number two. Number three is serving. Number four was music. Number five, mission trips or projects. Number six, interest level in church. Number seven, influenced by others. Number eight, influenced by parents. Number nine, gender and siblings. And number 10, church attendance. And we've taken time to unpack all those and look at all the research in past episodes. So you can go back and check that out. Yep. But, you know, we kind of want to think about these things as, as a group and see what are, what, how do these things affect our parenting? How do we practically apply them? So pastor, what do you, what do you think about this list? Well, I, I think when I look at this list two, uh, one thing particularly jumps out to me and it's that, uh, the importance of relationships. And I think there are two relationships mainly that resonate with me as I consider these 10 things. Uh, first is our relationship with God. As you'll see, Bible reading is listed there and prayer, and that's really this vertical relationship that we need to make sure is strong in all of our lives, individually as parents, and as we're, we're teaching our children that. But it's that relationship with God informed then by the relationships with other people, because almost all these other things involves other people mm-hmm. in our in our lives. So whether it's going on mission trips or uh, the influence of others in your life or church attendance, whatever, it's based in relationship. And so. Mm-hmm. Of course, the most important relationship is that investment in our vertical relationship with God. And then out of that flows the horizontal relationship with everyone else in the world that we live in, which as parents, we're to help our children understand how to build healthy relationships all based in our relationship with God. Yeah, that's really good. I think that's super important because, you know, it's just so funny how uh, that's what we've been seeing as we go through this whole thing is it's so simple Really? Right. It, it seems complicated. Mm-hmm. We just listed 10 huge things. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, my goodness, it's so overwhelming. But it's it's really not. It's it's really simple stuff. It's love God and love your neighbor as right. yourself. It's like you just said, Pastor, it's relationships 
that get fleshed out in these uh, particular kind of ways. Right. So yeah. I, I love that yeah. about this. I mean, you know, one of the reasons that we wanted to have you on is Brian and I are in process. We're in the middle of raising children and you have a couple that are out of the nest. One that's almost out of the nest, one close. leg out of the nest. Right. Yeah. yeah. Real close. <laughs> uh, how have you seen these things play out in how you've raised your kids? Well, I, I, I don't want to be a broken record here, but I do think that raising children is about relationships and that, you know, the, the Bible verse that we hear so often is Proverbs 22, six, where it says train a child in the way he should go when he's old, he will not turn from it. Well, the only way to see that wisdom played out is in relationships. We're training them, uh, out of our relationship with God and we're using God's word mm -hmm. as the source to train them. So, yeah. So that we're, we need to train them, but I'm not just training them to play sports. Right. I'm just, I'm not training them to, you know, be a, a, a dancer or to play the piano. We're training them ultimately to come into relationship with Christ. And then out of that, to inform all the relationships of their lives through the word of God. Mm. And, you know, God's word is, is, is the source because second Timothy three sixteen tells us that, you know, it, all scripture is God breathed. It's, it's, it's used for training, reproof, correction. That's what we're using mm -hmm. to establish these relationships. And so we've just always felt it was really important to model that before our kids. Uh, I don't think it, it, we, we had never sat down and really just always had in-depth Bible studies with our children and made them have expectations. You're going to memorize this. Mm -hmm. You're going to do this, but it had to be based out of relationship mm -hmm. and a love for God. And so we needed to demonstrate in our lives as parents and then encourage them through relationships mm -hmm. to have, to come to Christ and find that love for themselves right. yeah. in the word of God. So. Yeah. I think another important part of this is just prioritizing spiritual things in your kids' lives. And I think I've seen that play out how, as you've raised your kids. I've known you for a number of years. I've seen you raise your kids and you guys have definitely put a prioritization on spiritual things. Yeah. Well, if you don't, if you don't prioritize the spiritual you're in a, you're in a lot of problems. No one else as, as will, a, right? No one else. Yeah. The only part the, in our culture today, the only place they're going to get it is in your home or in their church. Right. Yeah. And if you don't take initiative in your home to find fun ways to do all of these things, and they mm. can be very fun ways yeah. in the course of life. You don't have to, you know, embitter your kids against God's word, or right. make it feel legalistic, but find those ways and then encourage them and not just encourage them, but model for them coming to church. Mm. I can't stress that enough because you are training them in something. Mm -hmm. You're either going to train them in activities or you're going to train them in the ways of the Lord. Mm. And it doesn't mean you can't have activities too, but the priority cannot get twisted. It's very important for that to not happen. Yeah. I think that's really important what you're saying there, Pastor Allen. And I, I know that that's what we're trying to do with our kids uh, or, you know, the one and the one who's coming. And uh, even this morning, we were just sitting down and, and we were just having a stressful day mm -hmm. and already. And we were like, you know what? We need to pray. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we said pray, it was really cool. And it's just because I, I we've been modeling this uh, and just doing it in our lives, prioritizing it in our lives, not just our kids' lives. Like, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. I, it's not important for me. It's right. important for you. No, no. It's important for me. Right. And I say, let's pray. And my son puts his hands together. Mm -hmm. Like right. he immediately, I mean, he's, you know, not even two. Mm -hmm. And that was just encouraging to me to know, okay, I'm not perfect. I'm by no means perfect at this. And I don't think any of us are saying that, but we're just doing this stuff. Right. And our right. kids see it in us. Right. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. I think that's really important. And I don't think we can miss the importance of God's word in that process mm -hmm. because it's easy to be overwhelmed parenting. It's easy to kind of freak out to think, especially as husbands oftentimes or fathers are like, man, I'm, I'm the, I'm supposed to be the spiritual leader here. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. God's word is the tool you need. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's that, and of course it's devotionals, it's other things you can use, but it's based in scripture mm -hmm. because it's in that, that we're able to do the things that are so important that, uh, it's it's God's word that makes him wise into salvation. You know, it's uh, thoroughly equipping them to do good works. That will be the thing that helps us. Uh, it, it's God's word that helps us to know that. So we don't need to be intimidated by that. You don't have to be uh, a pastor. You don't have to be have a master's degree in right. theology. You just need to do those basic things. Right. And just the consistent modeling of it 
is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting is we all have, you know, between all of us, there's decades of ministry experience and we've seen this play out multiple times in families' mm-hmm. lives. And, uh, you know, we can, we can with, with pretty accurate look at a family and see if their children will, will cling to their faith as they get older. And a lot of it depends upon putting the priority of spiritual things, the, uh, the relationships that are built and encouraged. And if the things of God are built into your family. Right. Yeah. I, I think we're going to hit on maybe a couple of those things a little bit, maybe here in a little bit. So I don't want to, you know, jump ahead or anything, but, um, you know, it's, we need to remember it's a blessing to raise these kids. Mm-hmm. It good. is stressful. It is so stressful to raise kids, but it's been the greatest joy of my life. You know, mm-hmm. it starts in the delivery room. I tell young families all the time, you're getting ready to see a miracle before your very eyes. Mm. Yeah. And God allows us to see the miracle of birth. And then he allows us to take that little life, which he's given us. Mm. He's loaned these children to us for us to then experience a love like we would never know in any other way. And yeah. that is just something to remember as they get older, because kids are messy. Uh, <laughs> kids go through stages. You know, I, I have this little saying, I, I say, been there, done that, got the t-shirt in raising kids. It's everybody's getting a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're getting the toddler t-shirt, you're getting the teething t-shirt, right. you're getting the junior high t-shirt, you're getting the high, the high schooler t-shirt, what mm-hmm. you are in process. Yeah. And I can promise you when they leave home, you're still getting a t-shirt, right? Yeah. You're getting the married kid t-shirt then, you know? And, that, and that's something we talked about a little bit earlier on. I just remember thinking through the fact that this is the only thing that we do mm-hmm. in our lives that ends up being permanent. Right. Like, like literally Leaving forever. Leaving a legacy. Well, and these, and these people, these individuals that, that the Lord has used us to create mm-hmm. uh, through us in this weird way are eternal beings right. Right. that literally live forever and we get we get to enjoy that. I think that's huge. Right. And my goal, I've heard this said before, my goal is not just to raise my kids to know the Lord. I want to raise my kids to where they are able to raise yeah. their kids mm-hmm. in the Lord mm-hmm. and have a kind of this lasting legacy. That's huge. I, I don't want to just go through religious motions with my kids or just say, well, I took them to church and I did my part. Mm-hmm. I, that's all part of it. But right. I, I pray, God, help me to raise kids that will want to raise their kids mm-hmm. to know you as well. Right. Yeah. So. That's kind of yeah. that ongoing. Legacy. Well, and I really think that with you know with families, one of the hardest things, and I know I don't I don't want any of our listeners to hear like, okay, here's here's the list of things that I need to make sure I'm doing so that my kids are going to be good Christians. And it's like, yeah, that's practical stuff, but but the number one thing that we need to take away is how do how am I growing in my relationship mm-hmm. with the Lord? Because if it's not real, this is one of the things that helped me the most with my parents. It was it is real for them. Mm-hmm. Their relationship with Jesus is real for them. And if I walk away from Jesus, they're not walking away from Jesus. They're not going to stop loving God if I don't love God. And that's that's one of the reasons why I love God even more is because mm-hmm. it's not just something my parents told me to do. Mm-hmm. It's something my parents do and love. That's good. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what we're that's what yeah. I'm hearing from you guys. Yeah. And I, I want to echo what you're saying there. I think expectations can be high on parents. And I know we've had conversations about this and I've had freak out moments and yeah. you've, you've come to me and said, Hey, you've got to, you've got to prioritize the really important things and, and let some of those other things go and, and not freak out about those yeah. things. Yeah. That's important. I think because n- number one, we're not going to parent perfectly. And I'll just be honest with you. As I raised my first son, my son, uh, Nick, our firstborn, I know I raised him at times worried about what other people were thinking about as I raised my child, uh, whether it be discipline or wh- whatever it may be. And I kind of felt the pressure of what others may think mm-hmm. in the moment. But I can promise you, as I got a little older and I got other kids, I didn't worry so much about that because ultimately that's that's not the most important thing. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to do this perfectly, it, but I need to parent my child. I need to discipline my child in a way that honors the Lord And is what God would want of me in the moment, not so much worried about, you know, some, some other, you know, Karen looking at me, get on me about, (laughs) uh, I'm proud of you for that, (laughs) you know, how I'm raising, how I'm disciplining my child. Now it's important to discipline your children. Don't hear me say discipline is not important, but. It's I not should, for other people. Uh, yeah, I'm more concerned about what God thinks about my parenting than what uh, someone else thinks yeah, about my parenting. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Especially good. some dudes on a podcast, right? Right, that's exactly <laughs> right. So, yeah, you mentioned that we had some 
some things here about how parents can apply some of these things to their lives. You know, Lifeway went back through their research. They removed all of the spiritual health indicators based on children's behaviors. And it really boiled down to the, the parental involvement. And that becomes really clear. And so there are nine things. We don't have to go through all of them because a lot of them reflect back. But, you know, it's like things like parents that participated in mission trips as a family or service projects. They, they attended church together. They emphasize the Bible. It's those types of things. And yeah. we can post that in the show notes, but was there one or two of these things that really stuck out to you guys that is like really important that we need to grab hold of? I mean, from my perspective, I think for, for me growing up to see my, my mom and dad model for me service in the church mm. and their service was based out of love for Christ. And so once again, that's their relationship with with Christ, and then they wanted me to be in relationship with others in that area of service. And so I saw them serve. They brought me to serve. They encouraged me to serve. And so really, as you grow up, it, it just seemed natural to mm-hmm. serve in the church. Now, in my case, my mom and dad raised me faithfully. Uh, they they did all you could do, but I didn't come to faith in Christ I was 23. But all of that training, mm-hmm. all of that that they— that did not return void. Right. That that was all powerful. Mm-hmm. And as I got older, I didn't depart from the faith. God right. called me to salvation, but service and modeling service before your children and doing it with a joyful heart is a very powerful thing mm. in the life of a kid. Right. Yeah. I think. Oh, go ahead. Well, I think any of those those things that are kind of like looking outward, like serving. You know, it, it mentions in here that parents who frequently shared Christ with unbelievers as their kids were growing up, you know, those are the really type of deep spiritual things. I mean, coming to church, that's great. You know, um, you know, doing all of those types of things are awesome, but you know, taking that next step where you're serving and you're, you're sharing your faith and you're, you're going further. It's your faith coming alive. Yeah, It's your church. It's not just sitting in the chair on Sunday morning, which is very important to do. (laughs) Model that bring your children to church, start there. That's, that's baseline. But out of that, find your area to serve, find your way to show in your life, your love for Christ for your kids to see. It's doing the uncomfortable stuff. Like that's, you know, that's the thing that really just stuck, stuck out to me as my Mm -hmm. parents, as I was growing up was seeing my parents do uncomfortable things. And even like going to churches that, and hear me rightly are uncomfortable. And what I mean by that is they're going to preach the word Mm -hmm. and the word is not always like, you're great. Everything's fine. The word is like, no, you're broken. You need a savior. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's what, you know, like we don't just go to churches that are entertaining us all the time. We're going, we're sitting in pews that are like shaping us and molding us and building us. But then, you know, we're going out and we're talking to random people about Jesus and that's uncomfortable. And when your kids, when I saw my parents do that, that it was like whoa this is real we're not just pretending here this isn't just easy this is real life and it was impactful for me yeah i I really think going forward uh god could bring great revival to our country Mm -hmm. he could but he may not and if he doesn't it's just going to be that much harder to really live your faith out in this world Mm. and so we really need to i believe our church needs to be a church that is made up of families who want to hear the truth of God's word, even in the hard times to hear it. Mm. So we can be shaped and molded by the truth because that's, what's going to help us to stand when it's very difficult to stand for God. And so, you know, uh, you know, a very milk toast, uh, cotton candy faith is not going to last very long. Mm -hmm. It will not sustain you and it sure will not sustain your children. Yeah. And so you as a family need to base this relationship with God and your family in love, in the love of Christ, but in his truth and, and us run to truth, even when it is uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, that's one of the ones that stuck out to me is that parents personally read the Bible several times a week yeah. or more as their kids are growing up. I and mean, that's important to uh, read scripture personally. Like you were saying, you know, we need to know that truth and study it and stand on it, you know, and then encouraging our children right. to do that as well. Well, and it's, it's way more comfortable. It's way easier. I don't know about you guys, but like you're, you're sitting down, you're reading your Bible and your phone's nearby mm-hmm. and, and you're like, Oh yeah, I forgot. I got to write this email or, Oh yeah, I forgot. And then all of a sudden you're on, you know, uh, Facebook and you're like, how did this even happen? It's like right. I blacked out and here I am on my phone now. It's so much easier to do that 
than it is to just spend time in the word. So. And, and I would just say about that, I mean, you're hearing three pastors talking about spending time in the Word, and you could you could be tempted to kind of tune out a little bit. But but listen, we're people too, and, yeah. and you know, we walk in our times of study and, and devotion in God's Word, uh, but we all have to start somewhere, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and we all get in dry seasons sometimes. And mm-hmm. so just understand mm-hmm. and know that, but just begin to do it if you're not. Uh, take those, take those uh, baby steps, you know, mm-hmm. start somewhere, right. but you'll see as you do it that, you know, it's not a burden. It's, it's a love. Uh, we just got to make sure that we don't get busy or too hectic or, you know, or or get get messed up in our out. priorities yeah. that we're not spending that time because right. that's got to happen. Yeah. Right. That's it. Yeah. There were, there were in this list, there were three negative parental influencers on top of the nine positive. And I thought these were really powerful. So I yeah. do want to go through these. It says parents allowed teens to choose if they wanted to attend church. Yeah. That's Uh, a negative influencer on their spiritual growth becoming an adult. Yeah. This is really speaking to um, a pet peeve of mine. I'll be quite honest with you. I mean, I've, I have uh, been doing this long enough as pastor Brian said earlier that, and it's not just teens. I mean, it it goes down. I've seen as young as down in junior high and even fifth Mm -hmm. or sixth grade, of parents saying, well, you know, Johnny or Susie didn't want to come to church. So, you know, we just let them stay home. And, uh, I'm listen, that's just, that is not good. And I'm just telling it's coming out of kind of just years of experience of, of seeing practically, Mm -hmm. I could, I can think in my mind of instances of people and families who allowed that. And as, as they gotten older, their, their kids are nowhere to be found, Mm -hmm. Uh, around the things of God. And they're oftentimes their hearts are broken because of some of the pain that's come out of it. I would beg you. And I mean to beg you parents to please bring your children to church and you can do it in a way where it's not legalism, but you know, it, you, you don't let them get up in the morning to choose if they're going to school or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, they're yeah. going to school and that's important intellectually to develop. But listen, to, to see your child spiritually develop is more important mm-hmm. than even their intellectual development, Amen. I believe. Yeah. Amen. And education is super important, yeah. but we're talking about eternal things here. That's right. yeah, I, would challenge, I yeah. would challenge all our families to dedicate uh, Sunday morning to the Lord. You know, Make that a time where you are spending time together as a family and you're coming to church together as a family. You're, you're, you're thinking about the things of God. You're implementing those things in your life. And really, as you do those things, the expectation is just there. Your kids don't have to get yep. up on Sunday morning and wonder, I wonder if I'm going to go to church today. It's just, it's a part of what you do and how you build into your routine. Yeah. That's part of, I mean, part of even like my calling to ministry was how normal church was to me and how, right. how much I loved it. And there were many Sundays where I did not love it, but I always knew there was going to be Charles Stanley on the TV. There was going to be muffins <laughs> in the oven. Right. And then we were going to church. Right. Those things happened every single Aren't Sunday. Those great memories. I, 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 I can smell the muffins still. And I knew we were going to church. <laughs> That's a great point. Pastor Ryan. I just listened to another podcast uh, of some pastors talking about how routine mm. is not bad. Right. Especially when you're discipling someone, yeah. you know, and so when these, these practice, even like church attendance now, it's kind of challenging right now. Right. Yeah. And, and it, it's easy to say, well, I'll, I'll catch it. I'll catch the, I'll catch the recording or I'll watch it online or I'll get to it next week. I'll catch up on the sermons. Mm-hmm. But when you eliminate kind of that routine or that part of your life to where you make the effort to get up, mm-hmm. you make the effort to bring yourself to church, you make the effort to be around other people. That is a key component of helping Mm-hmm. routine of discipling of, of mm-hmm. patterns in your life. That's and right. I remember those same patterns. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad got up every Sunday morning. He, he, he shined all, everybody's shoes with shoe polish. Now oh, that's, that's, cool. sound, that's like an 1880s, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but he, I knew it cause I, I could smell the shoe polish. Yeah. I could hear him whistling while mm. he was doing the shoes. And it was very annoying as I got older. <laughs> and then he would come up the stairs and uh, I remember junior high, high school, he would open our, our door, three, three boys in the same bedroom. And he would say the same thing, rise and shine boys, rise and shine. We're going to church today. Yeah. And he would say that every Sunday. And I, I'll be honest with you. It kind of annoyed me yeah. when I got older, but as I think back on it now, mm. those are some really sweet memories right. that it was a rhythm in my life of what my parents did. It's just, it just happened. And it was out of the fruit of that. Ultimately, the Lord called me to salvation at right. 23. Yeah. yeah. But 
like w- with some of my other siblings, mm-hmm. they were called when they were eight mm-hmm. or six. Like my son, Nick, he was called at five. Yeah. Right. Other k- kids were called later in life. So, right. but it's just in those routines that are right. very and, powerful. And it can be hard sometimes. Listen, I know the kids, you know, it, it, Satan will put a lot of roadblocks in your way, but don't let those things stop you. You know, I have to be at church pretty early on Sundays and my wife gets up and gets four kids ready for church and gets them yep. here on time. And superwoman. She is superwoman. You can do it. And I know your wife has done that and your wife has done that. Going to be. Yeah. And you can do it. No ma- I mean, you, you just have to make it a priority, make it something that you plan to do. So, okay. So this de- the next one is each drop in frequency of family church attendance as kids were growing up were a negative influencer. And we kind of talked about this last yeah. week in the sense of just letting other things take priority in your life. I think like... For instance, whatever season you're in, if you've got a lot of things going on with sports or a lot of things going on with extracurriculars, I know this is something that you guys have had to deal with. Your middle daughter had a lot of extracurriculars she was involved in. How did you manage all that and still prioritize spiritual things? Yeah, I, I think it's important to to really think through this because you don't want to become a legalist uh, about church attendance. Right. That is not helpful and that's actually harmful. Right. But at the same time, you definitely need to communicate to your kids. God is the first priority. Mm-hmm. And so we, especially with Morgan, Morgan was a pretty good athlete. She played travel softball and we had to make some choices. Number one, we had to make the choice of what type of travel team did she get on? Some travel teams go to Orlando and go to Kansas city and go everywhere. Well, she wasn't going to be on that kind of travel team because, number one, we weren't going to be gone from church that much. Right. We couldn't, and we didn't want to. So, But she did get on a travel team that was more local but still traveled two, three hours away maybe, and we would have different different um, tournaments that she went to. But we had an understanding that um, that would not take priority in, mm-hmm. in softball season over God. And we just had to find a way to make that work. And it, it were, rather it was, we were going to drive all the way there and we would drive all the way back home for church and go back if we had to, or whatever we had to do. We did it because uh, it was that important. That doesn't mean that she didn't miss a Sunday every once in a while, sure, course, because right. number one, we, I don't want to be a legalist about it. But at the same time, I wanted my daughter mm-hmm. and I wanted to communicate to the rest of my family right. Nothing is going to take first place right. in our family. Only God gets first place. And you got to find ways to do that. Mm-hmm. And I know it's very difficult, but it's worth really thinking yeah. about for the long term. Yeah. And I've seen families show up at like 8 a.m. or 9 right. 30 and like, yeah. hey, what are you doing here? Oh, we've got a ball game right. later. Right. We've got some a, of our, we're at our church today. Listen, we're not saying early. this because we have a church full of families that don't have these concerns. Right. And some of them are already modeling this and living that out. It's just you've got to ask God to give you wisdom to, to do this. Well, well. And part of the thing, I was even talking to my wife about this because she played travel hockey and she was talking to me and she was like, I'm actually surprised my parents let me do that. Because I had to miss some Sundays. But then she reflected and she was like, but, you know, I always knew. I think they, they did that because it was already such a priority. It was already our pattern to be in church. It wasn't like um, this was this was an abnormality. This was an outlier, something right. abnormal that I got to do that I didn't expect to do all the time. Mm-hmm. It was just this random thing because it was already a part of our lives to be in church. That's really good. Pastor Ryan, I think to think of it like that, but so think of it this way, softball season comes, you're on a travel team. Okay. We make some exceptions, but then if another season comes or camping season comes and then you're gone, you know, a ton during camping season and then another league come, it's the buildup of everything that then communicates, Hey, other things are our priority. And right. we got to just be super careful about that and walk in wisdom. So we're not talking about legalism. We're talking about wisdom yeah. and, and trying to walk well with our kids right? because our kids are talented. They want to be a part of things. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's good stuff. But it's just being wise in how you do it. Yeah. The third one was each drop in frequency of family devotions as kids were growing up was a, a negative parental influencer. And we've kind of talked about this as well. You know, when we talk about family devotions, uh, you know, different families do this different ways. Right. And I don't want to put the pressure on some family that they've got to have some long, uh, you know, church service every mm-hmm. night. You know, here in our family, what we do is we say, all right, it's we're getting ready for bed. You guys go go do your devote with the older kids. We can say, hey, go do your devotion. Yep. And they have their own thing that they do, their own Bible, their own devotional book. 
uh, with our little kids, we have a little Bible and we yep. read them a, a Bible story and we talk about it and it, it takes, you know, five, 10 minutes. It's not like we're doing these long things. I think it's, once again, it's the prioritization yeah. of these things in your life. Yeah, yeah. For us, it takes less time than bath time. You know, it's like bath yeah. time takes forever. And then it's like, okay, now we're going to read our Bible story. We're going to pray and then right. we're going to go to bed. Yeah, I think in my life, if I'm totally honest here, I think probably one of the biggest regrets of my raising my children was as they got older, uh, and Paula was so good about kind of being the genesis of making mm. sure that happens. I know I shouldn't admit that, but this with even as they were younger, you know, we had yeah. Bible stories that we would read and we, we would always pray together with our children, all those types of things. But my biggest regret probably is as they got older uh, to not find a way to be more intentional, to encourage them in spiritual things. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that I didn't. I mean, I encouraged them in ways, but I mean, just a better plan to do that, mm -hmm. I guess. And I think that could have looked like, uh, you know, a lot of parents are good about spending time with individual kids. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's very powerful. And I did that a little bit with my kids, but not, not near like I wished I would have. Uh, but to, you know, take your daughter out weekly or bi-weekly and let her know as you as a father, that, that you love your daughter and you're modeling. And I hope I modeled for my daughter what what kind of man she needs to marry because I think she married a really good one. Yeah, we, we would agree. Uh, but, but I could have done better in that. Yeah, I could have been more intentional as they got older, junior high, high school, to spend that individual time with my kids. And that that's mm, probably one of the bigger good. regrets probably in my parenting. Mm. Yeah, I've seen that with my, my grandfather. I think he felt... Similarly, I don't know for certain, but I know with his grandchildren, he he really did that. Um, he took his grandkids under his wing and he spent time together in groups, but then he individually invested in us. And um, that was powerful. I'll never. Yeah, that's those convicting times. to me. You know, it's it's good for us to take some time and assess just kind of our time. What, what are we doing? What are we spending our time? And maybe there's large chunks where we're, where we're watching TV or we're working on projects and none of those things are bad. It's just, what are the things that are really important and where do we need to be prioritizing our time for this season of life? Right. Well, and, and for me, it was like my time with my dad was working on engines sure. and cars yeah. and stuff right. and it wasn't like okay brian and my dad's not gonna do this my dad's not gonna sit down and say all right let's open our bibles and talk about eschatology like we're not gonna do that we're gonna open the engine up and fix a carburetor right. mm -hmm. but we're gonna talk about life and we talked we had so many conversations and we still do this to this day and i and i i think that's what it looks like to be intentional is just use the you got to work on stuff you got to do projects you got to do these things get your kids involved with right. you especially as they're getting older right yeah because i think we we really say hey families need to spend time together and they certainly do but there is something unique and special when you can take one of your children by themselves and if you got multiple children you, you know you may have to just get a schedule kind of together, but yeah. say, Hey, you know, we're going to go hang out where and find out what their interests are and, yeah. and, and do things that are fun for them, but just build those relationships mm. together. That's a very, very that's powerful. Good. And that's a part of discipling your older children. I think I, that's good. finding that's good. those ways. That's good. Well, let's, uh, let's put a bow on this and just kind of think about some of the really, really important kind of things, just kind of sum it all up. And I think the biggest thing for me is just really trust the Lord as you're raising your children. Don't, put your faith in yourself and your ability because we we are going to fail we're going to mess up you know that's a part of it but the lord is faithful and good yeah. and so for all of my mess ups and all of my sin and all those things god has been so merciful for me in the area of parenting and i think it's just because literally i've said god these are your children you've entrusted them to me and i'm doing my best to raise them in the way that would honor you that's really good. And one of the things I've been thinking about, and I almost said it earlier as we were talking, but I think this is a perfect time to say it, is as, as Pastor Allen, every time you tell your testimony, it always, it just brings me lots of joy to hear the fact. And, and maybe you don't feel this way, but I, I love the fact that it was until you were 23 that you got saved because I love hearing stories of parents pouring and investing themselves. Mm -hmm. And then God, because, you know, the Bible tells us that we, we plant and we water, but God's the one who causes the growth. Right. And so parents, we, you know, and I'm, I, I have this little guy and I have another one on the way and, and I, I'm praying now that God would, would grow them and he would cause the growth of salvation in their life because I can't make that happen. And so I, I have to 
pray to him and entrust all of that to him. And that's hard. That's really hard. But I know, I know it might take 23 years or more, but I can trust the Lord in this. And I am, I, I have to hold on to that. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Pastor Brian. Um, I would say, um, prayer is going to serve you very well as a parent raising these children. And it doesn't matter what age they are. Because you'll have an infant that an infant cannot talk to you and there's something wrong with them and you have no mm. clue. And all you can do and the best thing you can do is pray for them and pray to your God. Yeah, uh, They're going to teeth. They're going to go into the terrible twos, into the threes and fours. And they're going to act in ways that you do not understand why they're still acting that way. You have told them a million times. But let me just say this. Be consistent. Yeah. Please be consistent, parents. But keep saying the right things to them but you're going to have to pray because you feel like you lose your mind. Yeah. They're going to hit junior <laughs> high and you're going to feel like you've lost your mind and they're going to hit teenage years and you're, you're going to lose. You're going to feel as if you're going to literally lo- lose your mind. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to feel as if you lose your influence on your children sometimes, but ultimately there is still an influence there. Oh, yeah. But this is why it's important to have your children in church because this happened with every one of my children. You need other Christian mm. men and women yeah who can be a resource for you to speak into your kids' lives when they will not hear you. They will not listen to you. They will not hear. Someone else can say the exact same thing that you said, but they will be open to that person. And you must have other believers. Hear me say that. Not just a coach. Coaches are great. You don't need a lost coach giving your kids advice for life. You need other brothers and sisters in Christ who your kids know, who they can be poured into by them. And all you're going to be able to do in those moments is pray. Mm, Yeah. And then your kids are going to get older. They're going to move out and they're going to go across the world. Mm. And as they leave you, what you need to do is pray. Mm, Trust the Lord. That's right. That's, That's good. good. Well, I, guys, I feel like this was a productive uh, mm. series we've done. Mm. Pastor Allen, I'm really glad that you got to be on this podcast with us. I guess we'll invite you back sometime. Mm. I hope I didn't think, blow Brian? it. I'll think. <laughs> yeah. I like to show up every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> no, we'll have you on definitely more uh, for sure. And yeah. so, but uh, yeah, thank you all for listening. Brian, anything? Yeah, no, it's definitely encouraging to me. And I hope we encouraged and challenged parents. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to our next series. We're talking about media and all the different influences that come in that press in our kids and our big topic yeah Yeah. big topic so good stuff uh, we'll dive into that next time we'll We'll see see you you next next time. time For listening, and we will we'll catch see you, you next time. time. Catch you next time. I said it wrong. See you next we'll time. We'll see you next time. Okay, ready? <laughs>